Century is a snooker-based game that can be played by up to eight people and is steadily growing in popularity. So how do you actually play it and is it actually worth playing? Well, we're going to be looking at all of that because this is Break From Life. Welcome back, and if this is your first time watching one of our videos, then it's fantastic to have you here. The game Century is a simple idea that's come out of a small area of Asia. Now, I don't think anybody's playing this game instead of snooker, but if you've got more than two people wanting to play on the same table, then this might be a good idea. It's very simple to set up. You just place the colours on the spots like normal, and you only need one red, which you place here. Now, this is a little bit tricky because you need to know exactly where it goes when you're respotting it on the table. You have to find the halfway point between the blue and the pink spot. I'm using a light chalk mark to mark it that I know will easily rub off again. When you pot any ball in this game, it's immediately respotted, and this is going to be the spot for the red. Almost all the rules in this game are identical to snooker. There are just a small number of exceptions. Like snooker, you begin the game in the D and you must strike a red to start off with. You can't play any other ball other than the red until you have first potted it. So here you couldn't pot the pink or the black until you first potted a red. However, once you've potted a red throughout the rest of the game, you can continue to play any ball you want at any time. Potting the first red, however, scores you zero points. However, if you choose to play the red again, you will score ten points for every time you pot it. However, if you play the red and it doesn't go in, you in fact lose ten points and can even have negative points at some stages in the game. The whole purpose of the game is to get exactly 100 points, as it would suggest because it's called Century. You're not allowed at any point to use the rest in the game. Any foul will cause you to lose the same amount of points as you would do in a game of snooker, like going off this pink would cost you 6 points. However, these points won't go on your opponent's scores, but actually come off your own. Any foul on the red or not potting the red will cause you to lose 10 points. And although you can't use the rest, there's nothing that says you can't use a really long cue. Before you are deemed to be open, you must play the red first. Failure to do so will be a foul and will cost you the same amount of points as it would do in a regular game of snooker. Towards the end of the game, scoring more than exactly 100 is in fact a 10 point foul. If however you finish on 99 points, the red becomes 1 and podding it means you'll finish on exactly 100 points. The rules of this game aren't 100% clear, it's the same thing we noticed with the snooker jump shot rule, so we asked Jan Verhaas. This video makes it a lot more clear, it's in the card right now and on the Break From Life channel page along with a load of other videos that will help you dominate at the game. And remember to make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel. I decided that you should probably only be able to pot the ball you're actually playing and if any ball needs to be respotted and its spot's taken, that it lastly goes on the red spot as that's the highest value ball worth 10 points. Once I got this all sorted out and understood what I was doing, I invited some friends over to give this a go with me. It seemed very simple on my own, so I thought I'd get Abby and Mike here to have a go at it and see what they thought. Explaining to the rules to two people who'd never heard of this game before was actually surprisingly simple, so we got on with playing it to see if they found any problems when they started playing. What we noticed almost right away was this was a very easy game once you got anywhere near position and it was very simple to get in position because there's almost nowhere on the table where you've got a difficult shot unless all the balls go safe early on. Rather surprisingly as there was always another shot on, no one ever needed to use the rest, there was, it never came up and I thought I'd at least have to play a shot left-handed or something at some stage to be able to play a shot. And in fact, you always, almost always have a situation where all the balls are in the centre of the table on their spots and maybe one or two balls are off their spots just because they've been missed. About the only rule I haven't mentioned yet is you're only allowed to play a given ball three times in a row. So you play it three times and you've got to play something else. This really doesn't affect you in any way because there's almost always so many other shots on the table to play at any given time. This was good because with other versions of snooker where there's more than two people playing, 
playing safe can be difficult because you play safe and the other guy struggles to play the shot and then you're left with maybe a hard shot because you've played a good safety shot or something along those lines. And this, this wasn't a problem with the game because there was, like I said before, always so many shots you could play on. Anyway, eventually everybody left agreeing it was good, but I was probably too good to be playing it. And that's what I did discover in general playing this game. For someone of my ability, once you pop the first red and you get in, it's a very, very simple game to play. And probably 90% of the time, you'll get a hundred and it, you're pretty annoyed with yourself if you don't straight away get up, get straight up to a hundred. However, for players who rarely make a break of more than 50, this might actually be a really fun game because you, you will miss things and it will be more entertaining and it's always entertaining when someone misses the red and loses 10 points. For a game with more than two people playing, this is probably the best thing I've ever tried. Even though if there were about eight players of my standard playing or better we'd you know one or two of you would probably only ever get a shot before the other one of you won it so that's not so good but for for lesser players this is a really fun good game and something i'd really recommend trying i imagine this game was created because people didn't have enough snooker balls to play a full game of snooker with the rest were non-existent not there or broken or something and you want there were so many people wanting to play at the same time and all that considered it's a great game will it improve your game well it may well improve your positional play especially if your highest break is well under 100 something else that will improve your positional play is our video snooker position play and if you're missing pots you really should be potting try our video snooker aiming system and remember don't just watch play and make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel see you later